So Blake, what's going on in the bad world? Not much, just training, getting better. So I see you here um, at a new location, new gym, new coach and staff. So what's going on um, with, with that? So you moved from uh, Jeff and Kevin um, to a new training team? Um, yeah, I mean, I'll still work with Kevin and Jeff, you know, um, just, you know, just changing things up. It was time for a change, you know, um, ran into a good opportunity and I took advantage of it. And so your new coach is uh, Sugar Hill Stewart. How did you come about uh, meeting uh, Sugar Hill? Well, my partner with my promotions, Johnny Farace, is good friends with Jamil McCline, who Jamil McCline is good friends with Sugar. And Jamil found out about me and told Sugar about me and, and interested Sugar and so we came down here, we linked up and, you know, we, we both enjoyed it so, you know, we're going to start working together. Yeah, so it's a, it was a good match. It was so, a very good match. So, um, so later on we can say, that's a crank style? Crump. Crump. Yep. So we can say it's the, this is, that's crump. I'm learning the crunk style, crump. yep. From, <laughs> originated from Detroit. Yeah. Which okay. my uh, my other trainer and you know longtime friend, uh, mentor, manager, all the above, just been guiding me throughout my pro career and been honest and loyal to me since the day I met him, Jesse Robinson. Um, you know, while Sugar's gone, you know he'll be training me most of the time. So you know, me and Jesse will be working, and when it's time to get in camp and tune up, you know that's when Sugar comes down and we'll get ready to fight. So how many weeks now you're, you've been with Sugar, um, giving you pointers and tips? Sugar came down about three and a half weeks ago. We got a solid three weeks together, and he just recently had to go take care of some back home, but I'll be back down here. So um, from him um, handling you up for that three weeks, what improvement and what knowledge have you gained uh, from him being around you that three weeks? Um, you know, just fine-tuning little things, certain things, you know. Uh, he's very big on balance, and he's just very detailed on everything he teaches. So, you know, there's a lot of things he had to change to switch up. It feels awkward, but once I see it on video, you know, it looks looks really good. Okay. So you're doing a lot of videoing now when you, you trade so you can see your mistakes and what needs to be uh, corrected? Yeah, he's actually, which is a great thing, you know. Um, we... You know, every while we're training every day, you know, he takes videos of everything, sparring or just me shadow boxing and him talking and guiding me through it. And then later on at night, you know, usually around 10, 11 o'clock, I just get all the videos I've sent throughout the day and I get to, you know, watch it and, you know, get mentally, mentally relive it. Okay. Um, can you tell us, like, uh, what's the meaning behind your logo bad itself? Um, what is the meaning behind the word bad? My initials spell bad. My middle name is Allen, so Blake Allen Davis is my full name, and that spells bad, so. And then, you know, we see a lot of your promo with the, as you're wearing the shirt right now, with the, um, the breast cancer uh, logo on it, the breast cancer awareness logo. Can you tell us your, your passion behind supporting the Breast Cancer Association? Well, my mother has breast cancer, or had breast cancer, and she has, she has had multiple surgeries through it. Uh, she struggled, doctors actually made mistakes, and you know, it was very, very hard on her, and um, so I just figured I'd represent, give more awareness, and hopefully save some lives in the process. You know, breast cancer is something that can be treated, but it's, if, if it's, you know, found too late of a time, you know, it might be too late. So as long as you catch it in time, it's it's okay. But, you know, I believe it. there needs to be some awareness. And plus, you know, I, I enjoy representing my mom in the fight that she went through. So it makes her feel good. So you started your bad promotion last year and you had your first successful show in January. Uh, what's, and I know that you try to get off the second show um, post COVID and in, within this um, pandemic era, uh, what are your plans for your, the company, for the promotional company? Well, when things open up, we're going to continue. So you're just waiting for everything to calm down right now? Yeah, I mean, there's not much I can do. Um, everything's shut down. There's really no place I can hold venues. You know, you could probably hold an outside venue somewhere, but with my name and what I brought to the table and the standards that I hold, you know, I want to 
keep the high class boxing and entertainment. So when the time is right, I'll put on another show. Your weight class now is uh, light, uh, heavy. light heavy. So um, anything in the works for you regarding any fight coming up? As of right now, no, we're unsure of what's going on, I'm, where I'm going to take a fight, if I'm going to take a fight, if I can take a fight. Uh, you know, we're just in the gym bettering ourselves right now. That's what I'm doing. I'm in the gym getting better and improving. And um, if it's, you know, a month, two months, three months, regardless, you know, I'm going to look a lot better next time I'm in there. So, okay. um, so do you have any management uh uh, who is managing? Um, My closest thing to a manager is Jesse Robinson. Okay, so Jesse is uh, managing you right now. And then are you looking for any to sign with any promotional company? And if you are, which promotional company would you like to be signed with? It depends what comes across the table. You know, if I get a good offer and I like it, maybe, you know, but I don't know. I don't see the need to right now. I'm, you know, I haven't had any major offers or anything like that, so nothing's really interested me. Um, but we'll see, you know, I continue to get better and my value goes up and something major comes across the table, maybe I'll take it, but we'll see, I don't know. And uh, with uh, Sugar Hill Stewart by your side, how far do you want him to take you? As far as I can go, wherever that leads, mm -hmm. we'll see, you know, I'm in it, we'll see how deep in these waters I can go. Okay. And uh, what is what is your 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 style of boxing like in Hansu? What uh, pro boxer would you say your your style and your emanating your style off of? Well, a lot of people say I remind them of Tommy Hearns, which is actually how, which is why I believe Sugar, you know, had the interest to come down here and train me because obviously his uncle Emmanuel Stewart trained. Uh, Hearns. Yep, Tommy Hearns. So, um, yeah, I would say Tommy Hearns is what I would like to be, you know. So, uh, how did you bump into boxing? What landed you in this game? Um, I got jumped when I was in high school. I was about 17 years old and got jumped by quite a bit of, you know, maybe like seven, eight. I don't even know, to be honest with you. Um, it's a pretty traumatic experience. Um, didn't really bother me though, you know, and um, I didn't really get seriously hurt. You know, I was fortunate enough that I was very tough and I could handle it. And I decided to get in the gym and make sure that that would never happen again and to get those kids back, you know, or those guys back. And it just turned into a passion and I haven't stopped. And I just told myself, let me see how far I can go. And I'm still telling myself that. Your amateur career, how was your amateur career when you were coming up? My amateur career was um, a pretty quick career. Mm -hmm. I, um, my first fight was a tournament in Kansas City in the Ringside World Championships. I fought four days in a row and won the tournament on my first, you know, won four days in a row and won the tournament. Uh, turn open after five fights, which is most people, you know, you turn pro after 10, but you're allowed to after five. So I turned open after five. I was advancing pretty quickly. Uh, I lost in the Golden Gloves. I turned open at five so I can compete in the open division of Golden Gloves and fight some real fighters. Uh, lost there, um, you know, was just traveling all around the country, taking fights, fighting as much as I can, getting a lot of exposure, winning a lot of fights, winning a lot of tournaments. Eventually I made it to the Olympic team. I was ranked number two in the country under KMF Awesome, I fought him in the finals. And uh, when, he, when they, he stepped down or stopped fighting, you know, I was the next in line. So I stepped up, I competed for the Olympic team. I lost in Germany to Julio Castillo from Ecuador. Um, he was a very experienced Ecuadorian, was in a couple Olympics. Uh, came back home, you know, I ended up having x-rays and stuff and I did have some injuries in my hands, you know, I had to be casted up. And they were like long-term injuries, you know, that I just was fighting through and didn't really know they were that serious. And um, when I healed my hands up, I decided to get ready to turn pro. And that's what happened. And I just started my pro debut with a boom and just been leveling up and getting better in every aspect of life ever since. 
So you come from a prominent family in Davy. What did your parents say when you told them that you want boxing as your career? They weren't happy and they didn't want me to fight. You know, they didn't see a future and I want to say they didn't believe in me because I've always been an athlete and I've always been top notch at everything I've done. But, you know, as, um, as a parent, you don't want to see your son get beat up. So they didn't necessarily like it, but they supported me. And now we've just come this far and they're behind me. So they're supportive of whatever I want to do. So have they come to watch your fight? You know, every fight. Every fight, okay. So, you know, they, they can stand watch it. <laughs> yeah. When, when, when you compete, they're not yeah. like shine away and see. Uh, I think my my mom is a little bit like that, but you know what else is she gonna do? You know I'm in there, so. <laughs> okay, so can you tell us a little bit about your family life and if you have a significant other? I do not have a significant other, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean I have four brothers, um, my mom and my dad, um, and we're just a close family, you know. You know my dad owns a plumbing company. And, uh, you know, we've all pretty much worked for him at one point. And, uh, you know, I was, I was raised right. You know, I was raised to be good and honest and that's it. You know, we're just a good family that's close and we stay in touch and we support each other. So, so uh, are you the youngest of the family or? Uh, the second to youngest. Yes, yeah, second to youngest. Okay, so you have another younger family. I have a younger brother and three older brothers. Mm -hmm. So how does your younger brother look up to you? What, what, what does he say seeing you grind in the gym? Um, I mean, he's my younger brother, you know. I, I, he just, I don't know, you know. Brothers have their own relationships, you know. Um, he just, uh, he's doing his own thing. You know, he's in fire school, but he's very supportive of me. So, you know, he's um, definitely looks up to me. But, uh, you know, we have our own lives and we have our own paths. So, okay. is there any uh, poignant saying that you live by daily? A word that you know, a statement that you go by daily, uh, and that you impart to friends, and that you uh, say, uh, like a, like a phrase that you live by, or you go by. When you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> when you're going through hell, you keep going. Yeah, I don't know. There's not really nothing I um live by i just you know just keep fighting just keep going you know you're gonna everyone's got battles everyone's got their own issues you know so just gotta stand strong and get through whatever you gotta get through you know